Hello, brothers and sisters. Uh, 117, I'm looking at that right now, just as the time, just as I go live. Uh, and that is our separation. And that is really one of the things that we are discussing right now that so many people are looking at the separation of the bride from the body, the separation of the bride from being here on earth to being with Jesus in heaven. Amen. And that's one of the things that we want to, to do. I'm coming on here today to be able to discuss a number of different things. Uh, and, and that is one I want to discuss about the difference between date setting and watching. And that's a very important thing that we really have to get into right now, especially if we are trying to focus so much on specific days as the days. And of course, you know, I don't do that. I don't ascribe to that as far as date setting goes. I, I do not recommend doing that at all because the negative consequences that can go along with that. But I do ascribe to watching, and I have mentioned this many times. Hello, everyone. Please come on in. Uh, uh, about the, I believe it was the 24 different times in Scripture where we are told to watch, and there's a reason for that, okay? Well, I, we're going to talk about that and, uh, and the difference that it can make from those that ascribe to not watching. And we're going to have a big, I think the big main point of today's message is going to be regarding sin. And I think that's a very important issue right now, sin and what that means. You can see that what I'm going to be discussing now consequence of sin, and that's going to be one of the big issues, and how you can lose your pre-trib rapture reward. Now, I want to, and I'm hoping that no matter what side of the uh, topic that you tend to sit on, please, please give me the opportunity to speak with you concerning this because I, I just firmly believe that there is no more relevant time in the history of mankind than it is right now. Obviously, separate from Jesus's first coming and his death, burial, and resurrection, that being aside, for this period of time, as we are so close to his return, that's what I'm discussing here, and uh, and and I'm hoping to be able to explain in terms that will get you to understand the difference between sin that we have been forgiven of and its eternal consequence, the penalty of that sin. And the reason why, if we sin, we can still suffer the consequences of those sins, okay? That is a big, big issue. Now, let's, first, before we start, let's say a, a quick prayer here. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, my Abba, I love you and I praise you so very, very much. We, we it, it is so palpable to know just how close it is for Jesus to appear in the sky and to call up his bride. And, and we want and pray for all of us that are looking for that glorious appearing. And, and we have our hope in that, that you are going to find us worthy, 
we are asking to be found worthy as we continue to watch and prepare for that eventuality. Your word says in Luke 21, 36, watch ye therefore and pray always to be accounted worthy to escape all these things that are coming on the earth and to stand before the son of man. And I speak that word now and I believe it in faith and I thank you for it. And all those that are praying that now, I say, amen, all right? In Jesus' name, that's what we want to do. There's no other name by which we must be saved, all right? So let's let's do that. Let's do this now. Now, the, uh, what we want to get into and discuss, first off, date setting versus watching, okay? Now, I just pointed out, Luke 21, 36. And so what did we just pray about that? The scripture did not say that we will set dates and pray to be counted worthy always, right? Okay, no. It says, watch therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape, right? That is the point. Jesus is telling us that we are to watch. And, and if you're not knowing what to watch for, if you're not knowing what the particular signs to watch for, then it's really not going to make a whole lot of difference, as, I, as I'm saying, right? If, if you're not knowing what you're watching for, then really, what is the point of watching? Watching is not just looking around and just like, well, that looks good. No, it's, it's an active event. It is active because you have searched the scriptures, excuse me, and you have looked and uh, at those, and you see what the scripture says to be watchful for, and then you are looking out as we see out in the world. We see on the earth, we see in the heavens, we see these signs for us to be ready and watching. But the idea is not to be watching just for those signs, we're watching for Jesus, right? And that's that's the important thing. Oh, dear Sister Paulette, thank you for being here. Uh, and uh, and that's what we're actually looking for. Now, what's the difference? Date setting is just like what it sounds like. I am saying, thus saith the Lord, that Jesus is going to appear in the sky at 7 p.m. Israeli time, on such and such a date, right? Okay, that would be date setting. Is that what we are doing? Is that what the Watchmen community as a whole is doing? And the answer to that question is no. We are commanded to watch. And it. Uh, what's very interesting is, and I've had a number of messages where I have pointed out that uh, scriptures that are saying and that we can know. There, there's uh, types and shadows throughout the Old Testament and in the New Testament, which tend to show us that we can know the day and the hour, and that he, in fact, he, God, will show us because we have examples of that occurring, right? All right, now this is very interesting. This is very interesting. I found there uh, uh, a number of different sites on the internet in which they have discussed and they admit, yes, the wise men of old, they knew the exact time that Jesus was supposed to be here in his first coming. 
And Jesus himself admonished the Pharisees for not knowing that very moment, right? You see, they didn't know, because, but they should have known, right? And so what is happening now is they're saying, but you can't know about the second coming. Okay, that's hidden, that's secret, and it's meant to be that way. And then they use out of context verses that don't, in my estimation, relate to this as the example of, okay, yes, no man knows the day or the hour, as if that is supposed to relate to the rapture of the bride, which it does not. And I have made messages and earlier messages that discuss that in detail. I'm not going to go over that right now because I'm trying to keep this message as short and concise as possible. So we're supposed to watch. And, and we are told in various scriptures, such as Amos uh, 3 verse 7, uh, about how God will do no thing without revealing it first to his servants, the prophets, right? And, and uh, uh, it's, it, what's very interesting about it is that, you know, it's pretty inclusive, all, right? And so what you have to do is you have to say, oh, well, that scripture was for them, and it's no, it's no value to us today. That is a huge mistake. And here's one of the things that I think is so very important here, is that I, I think from a Western mindset, and it, it's typically this case, that when uh, when a person from a Western mindset looks at scripture, and let's assuming that they are actually looking at the potential for fulfilled prophecy as an example, in many instances, what we find is that from the Western standpoint, they assume that, you know, there's this linear time progression, and we come up here and boom, here is where our prophecy is fulfilled. And then it goes on and that's the end of it. Well, from a Jewish mindset, however, that's not the case. They don't view time as a linear timeline. They view it as a circle, as a cyclical time. And we know from Ecclesiastes that it tells us that what has been done before will be done again, that there's nothing new under the sun as we discussed that, right? And, and the point is, and we know that there are numerous instances that, that many can point to where prophecy has multiple fulfillments. Why? Okay, we go through the cycle, we have a fulfillment. We go through the cycle, we have another fulfillment. You follow me? All right. Um, and uh, so that's that's what we're trying to be able to uh, deal with here. So if we know or if we can assume and that's 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 based on God's word. If he's saying that, you know, what's happened before will be happen again. That's why we keep going through this. Uh, if we look at what uh, God's of uh, feast days. Now I'm only mentioning them as an example because they're called moeds, which is appointed days. But they're also uh, uh, known as uh, convocations, which means dress rehearsal, right? You keep rehearsing and then rehearsing and rehearsing until that particular event is fulfilled. Now it, it's a similar type of approach. You are going through the same type of situation each time, each time in preparation, right? All right. So that's what we do. When we're watching, we are, as things are revealed to us, as God points out, our Abba points out to us, assuming that you're part of God's family, if he's uh, through Holy Spirit is revealing to us more, and there is so much that's be, being revealed here as of late. And we, 
I, I, I think if, if you have any discernment in your spirit, then you know just how close we are. You know just how close we are. And, uh, and but does that mean that we would necessarily know the very moment like years previously, the, the exact moment. No, 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 no. And, and as has happened through uh, many instances, we see that um, through time, as I've pointed out before, we have multiple, um, uh, or should I say, uh, progressive revelation, if you will, we kind of have a big umbrella kind of picture of things. And then as we, we kind of, it gets more granular and granular as he reveals things, as we get closer and closer. And that's how we, he is fine tuning that for us. I mean, think about this. All right. Uh, so Noah uh, was told that the flood was going to come and this was, hundreds of years before it actually came, right? All right, uh, or should I say 120 years? I mean, that's that's what he gets. But the point being that he wasn't given that exact day at that time. Was he given the exact day? Yes, he eventually was. So what happens is he's told that he's going to uh, preach about the, and, and he's preaching about this for decades and decades, right? God tells him then to be able to build an ark, right? And um, and while there are people that say that it takes uh, 120 years for him to do that, no, the, the, the scripture actually doesn't bear that out. What it says that he preached for 120 years about this and from various other uh, sources, we see that uh, the ark actually took five years to build. So if we can just go with that for just a minute, to, here's my point. Over 100 years, he's preaching about an event that God has revealed is going to happen. Then five years before that, he tells uh, Noah to build this ark because why? Because he wants to save the people out of the flood that he's been preaching about. But then what happens after that? Seven days before the flood came, he then tells Noah, you take everybody, get on that ark, because in seven days, I am going to bring this flood on the earth. All right? So did he tell Noah the exact day that it was going to happen? Well, yes, he did, of course, right? So, but it was a progressive revelation. My point being is that what I see is that's the very same thing for us. We're being told that Jesus is coming back soon, right? And, uh, and, and then, then we see years are going by, and then we say like, well, wait a minute, didn't he say he was going to come back soon? Well, yes, yes, he, he's doing that. He's trying to be able to let people know broadly and, and across the world that he's coming back soon. And as we get closer and closer to that moment, more things are being revealed, right? More people are having dreams or visions. More revelation of God's word is coming to light and that sort of thing. So that's what we have, and that's what we're watching for. Has he revealed the date? I'm, I'm, I'm not so sure that he has, but here's, here's something that I can tell you, and the reason why I'm saying this at this moment. I had another rapture dream night before last, and here in that dream, I'm not going to cover it in detail because I just don't want to focus on the dream. I'm just using it as an illustration of the point I'm trying to make here. In this dream, it was again about the rapture train. And it was a 
very long train. I, I couldn't even see the, the full length of it. And I knew everybody in it was on a long journey. Now, I know where we are uh, all looking at that. And then, and then I knew, uh, I was thinking like, wait a minute, isn't that, isn't that what we get for a second Passover? Uh, and I'm thinking about that. Wait, uh, is that in fact the case? So how long is Passover? Uh, it's one week, right? you got a Passover week. So, and then, so here's what happens in this dream. I'm actually at the very back of the train, right? And what happens is I rise up and I go to the front of the train, right? And as I'm going to the front of the train, there appears on my head a white turban, right? Which you would or which I recognized, or at least it meant to me that I uh, that I have seen a number of those that are from the Sikh faith. It's not Christian. That's not the point here. It was, uh, but there's one particular group in which they wear pure white turbans and they're called Sikhs. And I knew what this meant. It wasn't meant that I was a Sikh. It meant to seek and it was on my head right so in other words you're going to look seek and you will find because that's the scripture that immediately comes into my head in the dream okay that's what i'm talking about seek and you will find and it i knew that it related to me going the first and because i was flying over this i knew that it meant the rapture, seek and you will find. I know that to be the case. And again, it was because it was so close. What did that tell me? We can know the date. What I was being shown is we can. And when we seek it earnestly, because God tells us that in his word, let all who seek knowledge ask of God and he gives liberally. He doesn't keep it back. He gives us a lot, okay? Uh, I'm freezing up, okay? Let me see what I'm doing here, okay? Uh, buffering, buffering. Let me see. I, I don't know what to tell you. Is it very bad, folks? Oh. Uh, Hold on. Can you see me, folks? Dear heavens. Uh, let me. If you can see me, I'm going to restart the video. Okay. Uh, how can I? Ah, okay. All right. Uh, all right. I, I will. Uh, I will restart, folks. If you can hear me and redo this. Okay. Let me do this. Okay.